you hey, talking Jesus, jazz. I scheduled a special yeah, talking so. jazz tonight, not even knowing about this a week Let's ago. Go. You know, because yeah. it's a draft week, and then this falls into our lap. <laughs> so this will be oh, the, the bulk of it. I'm, I'm just seeing you in the back of my camera. That's okay. so. Unless you want to be in the shot. Right How's the family? Everybody Everyone's doing good. well? I got my kids out there this week. Or they're, okay. they're hooping up out there on the court. Any vacations planned this no, summer? No, we're... we're I mean, the NBA kind of makes this a little it's tough, isn't chill. It? The summer yeah. used to start in June, and now, <laughs> it's now never it's ends. Summer league. Oh yeah, get draft, summer league, summer league, free agency. Yeah, never ends. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still picking up your face. I'm really sorry. Do you want just if you sit in the theater, you'll be all right. He has the whole thing. I have a two shot camera right there beside you. Oh. Well, please stand right here. You don't see all the camera. Sorry. They're going all out on this one. Oh, I didn't even see that camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you see it in there? No, we're good there. Okay. I'm just going to put a clap to sync this all. Oh, wow. Okay. Good to go. Okay. Ready? Well, let me start by saying welcome back to KJazz. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what are your, I mean, nice. you and I were just talking, you're like, 14 or 15 I, the last time they were on KJS? I just remember growing up watching it. I don't know, I don't know how long ago it was, but um, this is cool. What does that mean to you to have not only the access to your fans, because I remember you had made a comment a month or two ago, and you said, even if you have rabbit ears, we're going to make sure you get it, and now it's a reality because of KJS. What does yeah, that mean to you? The, look, the organization, Jim Olson, um, our crew, has been working on this for a long time. I mean, it's been a year and a half project, and the amount of work it's taken has been, um, it's been a pretty heavy lift because we, we've actually shifted an entire business model to, to be able to get back. And in a ways, we're taking a step backwards and a step forward at the same time. And I think our ability to control and, and be able to curate the experience for our fans and, and you know, being the fastest growing state um, in the country in all of these new jazz fans, being the youngest state in the country. We just want to make it so no matter who you are, where you are, you can be part of the action. And that's, that's going to be a big increase, and I think that's super exciting for, for our coaches, for our players, for the organization to say, hey, you guys are all working so hard. Like, you deserve to have it out there. Right. When, when you first heard the news about the demise of uh, other broadcast partners, how long did it take for you to maybe, it, you know, digest that and look at it as maybe an opportunity rather than a setback? So, look, we had plenty of options. We had plenty of options to stay in an older type model. Mm -hmm. We had plenty of options. I mean, the Jazz are in, in this market. is a very sought-after market. If you look at the ratings of the Jazz um, over the last couple of years, they've been uh, pretty, pretty uh, amazing in where we stack up. So it wasn't that we were forced to go into 100% of this model, we, we could have really reached and gone, but we did look at it and say, hey, if there was ever a time to do this, this is it. And then kind of where we ended up is probably not where we thought we could. And, and it just, it, it's truly because of our organization staying with it and, and kind of filling out this vision. And there was a little bit of a nostalgia of coming back to KJS. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I think of it, I always think of Hornacek and 14 and like the way this goes. And I was talking to Jeff the other day going, hey, you should just, everyone remembers you. Like, it's your number. Like, let's go out. Like, That's a great point. I like the marketing ideas. We'll yeah, get yeah, on yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely perfect. Um, you know, it's interesting that you're kind of a pioneer. And yet, like you said, it's like back to the future. I mean, we've, yeah. we've cycled around. But no one else in the NBA is doing this right now. The Suns tried to, and they're going through some issues. But... I suspect you might be getting a lot of phone calls from people wondering how this model is put together, how it's going to work. Do you, do you view yourself in that way at all? Because it's an ever-changing landscape. We Look, know the that. only way to make this possible is the growth of the state. Like, if you look at our growth, our fan base, we've, we've historically been showing to about 30 to 40 percent of our, our, our fan base. And oh, wow. because of the growth and us being able to take advantage of the growth of Utah, we're not a small market or a mid-sized market. I think we'll be a mid to upper size market as we go forward. Because of that shift over the last 10 years in market size, it makes it possible. Because I think when we, when we signed that last TV deal, um, 
we're probably in a different spot as a state. Yeah. And I think that the last 10 years in the state um, has changed everything. So if it weren't for that growth and the, say, fan base, this would be more problematic, I would assume. It would be hard. It would be really hard because I think um, it, it just the way the model that we're we're looking at is much more of hey how do we get as many eyeballs on yeah. on on our games as possible and I think that's really exciting for fans but this really isn't about that. it's really about the fan experience yeah. we have a chance to provide a better fan experience for everyone and yeah. it's a world I come from and um, I think it's something I saw from day one. Um, and by the way, this isn't this wasn't historically a jazz problem. This is a, a television problem. Yeah. And so this allows us to do that, and it's not um, just a, a K jazz thing. There's a direct to consumer offering where people can go to utahjazz.com. There'll be an offering for folks outside of the state of Utah for the first time ever, which I think will be pretty cool um, because we we do have a lot of fans in Idaho and Wyoming and everywhere else, and um, I think it connects us all. You talked about the, uh, I thought this was interesting, not so much a deal or an agreement, but a partnership with KJAZ. Ex- explain that a little bit further. Yeah, I, I mean, someone, like really someone asked that. about, hey, the long term, how long is the deal for? And right. I, think, I think when we think of our prior deals, they were, hey, we're signing a 10-year deal, we're entering a 10-year deal. And I think part of the reason why we're all in this spot is the landscape's change. You've got Streaming, you've got cord cutters, you've got a bunch of folks out there who are wanting to consume media in, in different lights and, and how they do it. And those historical contracts have been a little prohibitive. Yeah. And so we view this as, hey, let's, let's go together as a partnership and let's go, let's go figure out the future together. And, you know, there's a lot of hope in, in creating a, a great partnership. You s- definitely have solved the problem for the family that wants to go sit in front of their television now. Now they don't have to worry. Like you said, it, even if you have rabbit ears, it's going to work. What about the digital aspect? And you're, you're, did I understand correctly, you're going to bring this in-house? Yeah, so, so we, will, we will offer a streaming service on Utah Jazz. We'll probably work closely with the NBA. They've got a next-generation platform that's, that's pretty impressive that they've spent a lot of time and energy and money on. Um, and I think that we can help them kind of step into the future from that standpoint. Um, but we want one seamless experience on the app on utahjazz.com. So there's no confusion on, on where to go. And, right. and I think uh, apart from nationally televised games, um, whether it's TNT or ESPN, like every game should should be on there. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't think about the nationally televised thing. So will they no longer be able to split as far as you know? Because sometimes you were on at and TSN and TNT. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I think we're figuring all that out as we as okay. we work through this. Um, it, it also depends on geographic. So, right. so we'll we'll work through all that. This is a subscription based model where people will sign up for, and and there's a fee, and it's behind right. a, a paywall there, um, uh, similar to everyone else. But um, it, it's it's going to be good. Did you learn anything at all from? And I don't know where you sit on the RSL <coughs> and the MLS deal with Apple TV, but that's. For a lot of fans, that's problematic. It's it's difficult for them to get to that. And up until this year, it was on, like KJAZ was on KMYU, which they could watch. When you look at that model versus what you're trying to do, is that something that you thought, well, we don't want to get stuck? I mean, you may eventually get there if the NBA takes everything, but I, who knows? I think if you just back up and you say, from a fan experience standpoint, how do we consume games? And... I think the first thing or the mistake you can make is that everyone's the same. And if I went and created like a segment analysis of our fan base, you're going to have folks who want to sit at home and watch on TV like they do the news and everything else. You're going to have folks who want to watch on their iPad or their iPhone on the go. You have folks who want to stream and do watch parties. You've got folks that want to capture right or wrong, just snippets of the game. And so I think any time you have a single platform model, it's going to be a little more challenging going forward. And there's hope that everything will become on one platform. What we're doing is we're going to produce our own games and we're going to curate. But as a media company, we're actually creating a multi-platform model. Oh, wow, yeah. So we have a chance to hit every single segment the way they want to consume media. 
and I think that's going to be a moving endeavor. Right. And I think we're set up to not only fit that currently with this new announcement, but also from a future standpoint of where it's going to go. So for the fan who's been waiting for something like this, you've had tweets, you've had phone calls. What do you say to them on a day like this? Hey, it's here. Like, I think that um, this has not been an easy process, but um, hopefully every single segment feels like they got a win today. Right. And that's hard to do. You can find it somewhere. Yep. No matter what. what yep. Can I ask you just a couple quick questions about yeah, yeah. the week? Uh, draft day coming up. You get nine to start with, number nine. I don't. I, I suspect you would love it if you'd have been higher up. But what, what, are you, what is your hope for Thursday? So, first of all, um, the organization here is incredible. I mean, the experience we have in the draft room is um, like nothing I've seen, whether it's, it's Luca from the international side or Chuck from the college side. you got 23 years, Danny Ainge, yeah. who's drafted as well as anyone in the history of the NBA, um, Justin Zanuck. Um, it's exciting to be with that group. You've got Will Hardy. Um, in there and the collaboration between this team um, has been exhilarating. It's been fun. And I think everyone sees that, right? Mm-hmm. I think people saw that last year. Um, and so I'm excited for just the the art of the possible and what this organization can do. I think um, no one can really predict the next three yeah. days. It's a marketplace and like no one in the league knows really how that's all going to play out. And um, it's a closed marketplace, so you, you all need to work together as teams if people are moving or trading or drafting. And um, I think we're prepared to do what we need to do with our picks, and we'll see what happens um, in that marketplace. Well, it's a great point. We've been in the building now for about an hour, and Danny hasn't gotten off his phone. Yeah. So, so I mean, Danny and Jay-Z, and they're, they're glued at the hip right now. I think yeah. they both probably slept in the facility last right. night. Um, but, you know, I, I trust them immensely. I think every Jazz fan should should just know that we're in phenomenal hands there, and um, uh, I'm excited to to watch them work. And it's it's not clear cut. I mean, you're you're betting on um, the future yeah. of kids at 18 and 19, which is a lot of that first 10 pick of those 10 picks of the draft is like we we've got a very young draft, and it's also about talent development and health and positional size and so it, it'll be it'll be fun and you brought the draft party back yeah a lot of people I mean we <laughs> yeah there was a, that was kind of <laughs> funny but um, yeah it'll it'll be good like we want our fans to be able to show up people are excited about that um, we've got an event going on on Friday so we had to at least move around oh, that's and that was right. the only date that that event would work but um, you know we'll have we'll have some of our players pop over and it should be it should be fun well look at you a nostalgic guy we were talking about some things need to come back k jazz some of the uniforms draft party delta center the delta center yeah. to top it all off i mean that's that's pretty cool that you know you go back to the roots of this organization no this I organization i mean we we've i mean this we're going into our 50th year wow like and that's that's pretty that's pretty incredible and this organization has, has been through a lot um We've accomplished a lot. I'm a fan first. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm, I think I'm one of the only people in a, a spot like I'm in who grew up, you know, like everyone else, right. cheering for the Jazz. And we know all the ups and downs and the pain of that, right? <laughs> and and we're not going to tiptoe into a championship. We're, we're, we're going to need to be aggressive and we're going to need to do some unconventional things. Um, but I think there's a lot of hope. The goal is to win a championship. And... You know, we can be nostalgic and we can do all that, but at the same time, like, if we can progress and go forward, we're looking forward always. We're not looking back. It's nice to remember, but we're looking forward and saying, hey, how do we, how do we get there? How do we build? And I think we've got the best team um, on the planet to go do yeah. that with the dynamic between DA and Jay-Z and, and Coach. And um, I always believe you just put the best people and the spots and get out of the way and that's that's really <laughs> like how i how i feel about this organization right now that's good because not all owners are that way so. uh, well, <laughs> for good or for better or worse right, i mean right. i don't know yeah. um but i like to be involved too i think it's fun um 
Well, again, thank you so much for your time, and welcome to KJS. All right, that's kind of cool to say, right? Yeah, I love it, man. All right, man. Okay, thanks, Ryan. <coughs> that's beautiful.